Welcome everyone to a castle game for Age of Empires 4. And today, spawning on the west side of the map, playing in blue, we've got Anatan playing as the Holy Roman Empire. And his opponent on the side, playing in red, we've got Crackety here, playing as the Chinese. Mm. Welcome everyone to Cliffside. I think it's one of my favourite maps in Age of Empires 4, actually. Lots of uh, versatility on this one. We've got you know, the direct access to each other right in the middle of the map. And then you kind of got the flanks as well with uh, resources very evenly split in the middle of the map. No weird kind of shenanigans or spawnings. And what you do get is this kind of pivot towards, you know, getting to that middle, securing the gold veins at sort of 15, 20 minute mark. Before then, you kind of got your gold veins at home to rely on, which is quite nice. And this is kind of an interesting matchup, though, because I feel this map has two elements to it. It can be very aggressive at times if you go through through straight through the middle, but at times as well, like if you play it safe, it can be a nice map to boom away with, especially when you've got a static landmark such as the Barbican of the Sun. That could just deny this middle entry point in many ways. The Chinese, their spawn is very nice with the back gold. It's definitely what you want. One thing to bear in mind as well on this map cliffside is deer camp is always a little bit further forward or to the side, so just basically not at home. It does mean it leads to earlier farming transitions, which can actually really hurt you because if you're facing up against someone who's aggressive, this is actually a really important detail on this map, I feel. this It's not something very similar to many other maps. I think it's very something specific to Cliffside. It's because the pocket economies are a lot more exposed, they're, they're not as close as you maybe expect on, say, Dry Arabia. I mean, look at this deer camp for the Chinese, basically in the middle of the map. And uh, this boar on the south and this deer on the south as well, very, very exposed, very far away from the main base. And what that means is, compared to a lot of other maps, farming transitions need to come a little bit earlier. And that means if you're up against someone who's being aggressive, they have map control. And if you're trying to be defensive, you're giving away map control, they can actually take the pocket economies, which are a bit more exposed. But it means that you can't rely on a bit more of a safer deer just to buy some time to get units. You're going to have to have a farming transition, which is very expensive for many civilizations. And so it has a high price to being greedy on this map. But I think this map, one of the reasons why I love it so much is because it's very different. It offers a lot more strategic uh, variability compared to other maps and it's an exciting one for sure. It's going to be the Arkin Chapel for the HRE, going to give the buffering of 40% when the prelate does go inside within a radius. And uh, I was actually having a chat with Twitch chat earlier on, uh, just before this game, how HRE in an interesting spot. You know, with the additional of marching drills now for free, right from the Dark Age, it doesn't sound like a big difference, but uh, for me personally, HRE has been a really strong civilization right from the get-go. I think a 40% buffering on the gathering rate of villagers right from the get-go is massive. Like, there's no other civilization that has that kind of crazy economy right from the get-go. It's not... You know, you have civilizations that, that scale, they build up to it, which is quite nice. You know, you have the cistern for the Byzantines that, you know, go up to, I think it's 20%, 26% eventually. It takes a long time to get there. Like, that is not an immediate thing. 26% gather rate for that. You got the uh, the Shogunate Castle for the the Japanese, 75% gather rate on, the, on just the farms. You have, first, you have to pay for the farms. You have to get Shogunate Castle. That doesn't come until, you know, ages away. You've got things like maybe the House of Wisdom 10% gather rate or for the Ayubids after you get the first level, which is 10 buildings. Uh, you get 15% for the Abbasids, but you need, to, I think, 15 buildings for that, for the tier 1. Either way, what I'm getting at, 40%, nothing comes close. Oh, hello, what's going on here? There's a barracks. and uh, You know, with Mana Times coming out as well, you know, they've, got a, they've got a unique unit in this regard. I mean, I guess English get them as well, but... It has a really nice unit to have access to in the feudal age. I think HRE, they're going to see a lot of a lot of differences in terms of playstyle. Like, I think up to now we've seen HRE very much a castle age focused civilization because of the fact that in a Regnus Cathedral, you get relics in, it's, it's massive, right? It's a big deal. I think players have oft, often opted towards castle age, that kind of timing, that kind of presence for the HRE, just because the castle age is so strong. But that's not because the feudal age is bad. It's just the feudal, I think the feudal age is great for HRE, always have been, but castle age has always just been that much better but with marching drills it shakes things up a little bit and maybe players will be focusing on that feudal age a bit more barbican and some for the chinese can protect that govain around the back and it's a this is a great landmark i know a lot of people compare the chinese to the jushi legacy the jushi legacy in many ways being you know better in, in several regards but i think something's often often overlooked is the barbican of the sun how much protection that it really offers 
Because of course, you know, if you're going to be a civilization that booms away, gets a lot of economy, one thing you want is static defenses and you get one just for aging up. It's a very nice landmark indeed. And with three Imperial officials, that economy is rocking and rolling. Going around the pack with a scout just to find out what's going on and well i wonder if there's gonna be a cheeky fast castle it looks like it actually there's plenty of villages on gold i think that's probably my main i mean six villages on gold that's a lot with being supervised as well definitely suggests that kind of play style it's got plenty of sheep but what the chinese are gonna to have to do they're gonna to have to make the early castle age work for them because they need to push back because look at this the two man arms this is what we talked about right having Map control at this point denies deer camp and so the, the Chinese are going to be very very dependent on the sheep which is uh, just as well they've got a decent number of them and after that they have to make sure the castle age tech up does fight this unit number back for the HRE so they can get the uh, deer camp eventually now speaking of uh, feudal age and HRE maybe playing to that way it looks like it's going to be the case archery range being added and Oh, might lose a villager there. No, nope, maybe not. Anatan keeping them alive. Expect no less, of course. Getting an outpost around the back, because of course now Anatan moving in that direction. But plenty look how fast these guys move, by the way. Holy smokes, 1.38 tiles per second. They get there quick time, just as well the Chinese build faster, right? Get the outpost up and... Looking to get some Palisade Walls up as well, being able to wall up to the resources. But it looks like it's going to be good for the Castle Age. One thing to consider as well with the Chinese, getting to the Castle Age with the Astronomical Clock Tower, give them access to Nesta Bees. That could be a nice unit just to invest into one or two of them to push back the infantry units for the HRE. Did add in a second uh, archery range as well, so definitely this is a very different way to play the HRE. It's exciting! Looking forward to seeing if you can do some damage with this. Slowly break through the Palisades, but difficult to really push on in because everything being so condensed. wonder whether... Yeah, Blacksmith, maybe for, for Siege Engineering eventually as well. Bear in mind one thing to consider, not necessarily seeing it in this particular matchup. When we think about extended feudal age, if you're going up against another civilization doing this very similar, you know, what you generally want is you want something working for you in the background, and a 40% economy bonus with the prelates is uh, absolutely massive. But of course, in this scenario, we're up against a fast castle. And it's going to be the astronomical clock towers we kind of anticipated, and it's a good thing he's got the sheep, because... Uh, Without this food, he's going to need a farming transition here, unless he pushes back this army. Which, to be fair, should have a good opportunity to do so, because all he really needs for astronomical clock tower units, of course, is uh, wood and gold, and that's pretty safe and secure for now. Look at the investment into military units, 21 versus 1. I think with that heavy investment into military units, Anantan needs to do something with it, if he can. It's tricky in this scenario. Oh, there we go. Going to be diving in a little bit, trying to deny the blacksmith, it seems. Palace Guard is out, which is going to be decent, but it needs a mass of them, not one of them. Well, it's not going to be enough. It's going to be sniping out some villagers here, diving on in. This is go time, right? Anatan recognizing that Crackety just spent a lot of resources to get to the castle age, so now is a good time to push. The question is, can he do significant damage and... You know, even one palace guard is tanking quite a bit, fighting underneath the town centre, fighting underneath an outpost. But he does have a lot of units. Anatan behind this will be opting to go to the castle age, but is doing some damage for sure. Don't forget that the Chinese have had Song Dynasty, so they were producing a little bit quicker, so he can afford to lose a couple of villagers. But he's kept idle quite significantly. There's a question in chat on Twitch. Is uh, grid mod not a thing in AoE4? I don't believe so. And uh, the one thing to consider, just unlike Age of Empires 2, you can't actually apply mods to ranked games. You only apply them to custom games. And usually, yeah, that would be quite nice to have a grid tile 
mod actually to be fair i'd quite like it yeah I, there's something actually i miss with mage of empires too quite 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 big way actually because if you're thinking about ranging and like say you want to place an outpost near a resource and you just want to make sure it's out of range and not ranged by a town center with your villagers for instance sure you do have a bit of a range circle around thing here but sometimes it's a bit nice just to to count the tiles for the range right now behind this crackety here being in the castle edge anatan doing the sensible thing by warding up he has to buy time right so he needs to get to the castle edge himself there's two ways to do that safely and securely one is by getting units as a standing army to try and survive the other is to get palisade walls and static defenses in this scenario anatan opting for both which is just as well because the chinese and the castle age can pack a punch look at these palace guards they're pretty fast on their speed on their feet and, and speaking of which by the way we say they're fast right but actually if you compare them to the archers that anatan has it's the same movement speed and that is the power of marching drills which is a free tech now of course yeah mentioning about the range on the around the town side it is not immediately intuitive for sure I'm not really too sure I fully understand it myself. But yeah, I think essentially this is the range of the TC fire. But I think I don't know if it yeah, it should that should be it really. But uh it's just some I don't know, for me personally I'm much more used to uh, getting tiles and counting them. Either way, getting the outpost in the forward position, and I'm trying to delay and deny it a little bit. Does get a couple of villages, by the way. You can see Crackety here trying to make that push out for food and Anton recognizing he's struggling on food so trying to pressurize it but ultimately going to do so much and he's going to go up the castle with the Regnum's Cathedral which is actually still very relevant because Crackety hasn't been able to uh, pick up any of the relics understandably so with this number of army in the way you see Archer's move to snap out a couple of villages oh that's a bit awkward yeah going to snap out as much as he possibly can and I mean I don't hate this actually because Archer's do start to become a little bit less relevant in the castle today, he's going to have to opt for heavily armored units, possibly man at arms, maybe add a couple of lands in today, should be fine. Going to get the man at arms upgrade first, and he does have the production buildings, three of them. China's struggling on economy though. And now, pendulum has swung. It's now time for the Chinese to be a bit aggressive. We'll lose the scout pretty quickly. But ultimately, Anatan's got a lot of production buildings, so he should be fine to pump out units. And I think he's bought enough time to get there. It does have heavy maces coming on in. That's going to increase the bonus damage against uh, heavy armor units pretty significantly. By plus six. These palace guards won't trade particularly well. Speaking of which, one palace guard just chipping away at villagers there on the berries. This is a situation where Anton has to keep the pocket economies alive and kicking and working. Because he's very dependent on it. Very dependent on the berries. Picking up one relic in. Going to bring him on home and to the outpost. Certainly now, the Chinese can breathe a little bit. Can go for the berries and the deer camp just as well. Because, you know, it would be a bad time for a farming transition. Got plenty of food and gold in the bank, actually. Wait. Is Crackety... Is he? Is he? I mean, he's not, right? He's not thinking about Imperial Age, right? Surely not. It can't be, it can't be. He's just not spending his resources. So maybe it could be. This is interesting. And the reason why I say this is interesting is because we saw, I think it was Puppy Paw in the grand finals of the EGC TV tournament do very, something very similar. Uh, unfortunately, he, he, he died in that game, but... That was up against the Jean d'Arc faction that was uh, running right with knights. That was a different sort of scenario, I guess. But I think he's just uh, maybe struggling with wood for production. Maybe going to spend it. I don't know. We'll see. Definitely interesting to see if it's an Imperial Age. At least can test the relic some. Oh, this could be a big pickoff here by Crackety. There's a lot of villagers about to go down. And and oof, he's not reacting either. He reacts now. We'll lose a couple. Oh, but he's going out to gold as well. This is actually quite a significant area of the map. That's a secondary gold for Anatanda, and he needs that gold. Yeah, this is a concern. Anatand, you've got 700 gold in the bank, but you know the power spike now for Cracky with the units. 
means he's causing a lot of idle time and Anatan is going to struggle to get the resources to pump out units like you can see like he's just about maintaining it for now and you know the barracks are being idled a little bit oh this is a lot of food in this area this could be huge yeah and he, he's, he's spending his resources now just getting more production buildings maybe just waiting to see what he wanted to produce Looks like the new palace guard and crossbowmen. It's a bit of an awkward situation actually. There's not enough space in these two outposts. We're engage with a couple of uh, palace guards. Gonna need more. He's sending more now. And it's the garrison inside, but he's gonna lose the army. He's gonna pick off some reinforcements, which is definitely just as well. We're gonna go onto the village on the gold now, but there's still crossbow for Anatan to defend with, which is uh, pretty hefty. I don't think the palace cars will get too much value. Down over here, though, they're definitely getting value. Anatan, he's idling a lot, pushing villagers away. He might lose the army, but he's done damage, that's for sure. Palace guards all cleaned up at the back. Anatan, he's uh, caused a lot of idle time, but he might need to back away. I don't think there's necessarily any need to fight this now. He's done damage. Yeah, he's going to back away. With two relics apiece. We'll leave one more relic here for the grabbing. Anatan looking to grab it with Regnus Cathedral. That's going to be plenty of gold coming in. Oh, what's going on here? Hello. Anatan. Not going for the relic. All right, yeah, Crackity spending what he's got. No crazy Imperial Age. Maybe he was thinking about it and thought, maybe not. Anatan has lost uh, quite a few villages. Don't forget Song Dynasty has been working quite hard for the Chinese, so the economy is going to be scaling really nicely. And I think, I, you know, I guess Song Dynasty is actually quite nice to get into this situation. We talk about the strength of the HRE economy. Song Dynasty, a relatively cheap way to scale that economy. Not having to invest in a second town centre, but always scaling quicker than your opponent because of it. As long as your opponent's stuck in one town centre. Now three outposts. And with crossbows, I, I, yeah, this is this is a tough push for Anatan. I don't think it quite has enough, but he's causing idle time. Ultimately, with 15 villages, is decent. Uh, it's a decent chunk of the economy. Almost a third of it. Another fourth outpost goes up in this position. and yeah, This is a throwaway of a lot of units. For Anatan without really achieving too much. Idle time is, uh, is is achieved, but villagers are still alive. And they will be out to work again. And yeah, I don't know about this expensive losses of units for Anatan. I think Cracker would be okay with this. And there is a farming transition coming for Anatan. This is a bit of an awkward timing, actually, because Krakeny might push back. He's lost a lot of army, Anatan. So we talk about when you're in tech up, when you make big switches as well for farming, you're going to want to have a standing army to be able to defend. And he lost most of his army, Anatan. And with one nest of bees, even just one, that could be a problematic situation. But once the farming transition does end up coming into play, it's a lovely bit of food coming on in. Now, farming transition-wise, maybe Crackety might need to think about the same sort of thing. It's gonna be, uh, to be fair, she's still got the board to take. Can't quite see how much food is left on that. Can't click at it. Click it. Click it. Click it. There we go. Half remains. Oh, Palace Guard's going down the south. I mean, this is a big pickoff. Like, there's nothing here for Anatan to defend it. Okay, I'll just, uh, uh, that's brutal. He's going to lose a couple. That's for sure. Even with Will Barrow, the Palace Guards will, will chase up to that. Will they, actually? Yeah, they should be able to, but the Woodline kind of bothered them a little bit, and Mantub's going to come and save them. Going to come and save the day down in the south. Pushed off a deer, which is nice. Getting the sacred site down the middle, and maybe Crackety could look to get the third one. Good amount of gold coming on in. Now, this is going to be calm before the storm, right? Like, I feel like Crackety 
the concern for him is he might need that farming transition a little bit at an awkward timing. He's not really pushing with his army that he has already. He's got the deer camp to take. And once that does come in, he's going to need that farming transition. A farming transition already underway for Anatan. So it looks like in the next 5-10 minutes, Anatan might be able to really start pumping out units. And it could come at a bad time for Krakeny if, uh, if uh, you know, Anatan's pumping units whilst Krakeny's having to transition to farms. It could be problematic, but we might not even get to that situation. The reason why I say that is three Nesta Bees up against uh, an HRE army which is predominantly infantry based. That's going to be tough to deal with. Like, the economy not really set up here for Anatan to be able to get siege engines. And uh, that's kind of what he needs right now. try and get an outpost and I think as well with the natural flow of the HRE I, I'm not sure if marching drills is is definitely a big game changer to focus HRE on the feudal age because timing wise you know when you play for the normal castle age and then into the imperial age being cheaper playing an extended feudal age it delays your castle age but more importantly it delays any sort of imperial age timing you can imagine imperial age with a couple of cannon land placements inside the outpost right now it's very difficult for the Chinese to really push in, and the Chinese really do. Their power really is in the cast stage. I mean, they got the Song Dynasty economy rolling, and Nesta B is focusing on farms. It's actually really problematic for Anatan. I'm not so sure how he deals with this. It's mainly the Nesta B numbers, although if Kraken doesn't protect them adequately, it could be problematic. Or oh, Manatan's getting absolutely chopped through with the Nesta Bs, and still three of them remain. And I, yeah, I don't think Anatan has enough here. The big concern as well, the Kraken here has crossbows, which is the count unit, although. They're not the greatest when the man times to get right on top of them like they are right now. But it feels like he has enough. Let's lose one Nesta B. He's about to lose another. Still one remaining. Getting great value. Now, it does have a defender's advantage in Anatan, but I, yeah, I mean, he's getting a lot of value out of this. That's for sure, Crackity. He's got a greater economy, greater unit numbers. Now, he needs to take that Nesta Bs if he can, Anatan. He just about gets it. He does indeed. He had to sacrifice a couple of villagers to do so, but that's okay. And now Krakeny backing away. But he's done some damage. Sacred Sight of the North captured by Anatand. And Anatand stayed alive, which is important, of course. Economy a little bit out of whack with the wood situation. It's quite heavy on stone. I suspect he's going to look to get a keep. Maybe... I mean, it's not going to be another town center. I mean, he could go for another town center, to be fair, but... It feels like a keep could be a bit more solid to protect the farms, which are kind of far forward, actually. That's a lot of food economy that could be idled by push. Contesting the sacred site in the north. Interesting, no one's actually gone for the sacred site in the south. I thought say that, Crackety just gets it. Getting the emplacements inside the outpost, just to give a bit more of a breathing space in case another push comes on in. But I gotta say, the economy's been a bit it's been a bit stronger for the Chinese for quite some time now. That the 20 villager lead is, is massive. I mean 40% is great. But so is this Song Dynasty for the Chinese. And here is the farming transition for Crackety. It's done pretty smoothly after all, and that's a lot of farms, granary, stacking with each other. Very nicely done. The question is whether the HRE go for a bit of a cheeky Imperial Age. Does he try it? Does he does he be does he does he look to be a bit greedy with it? Possibly. Like he's not terribly far off, at least not in terms of gold for sure. Yes, yeah, the food that's been a bit of a problem. Of course, he was idle off of food for quite some time, and that, that's really what it's about. Yeah, it's good to get to keep in front of the farms. It makes a lot of sense. He wants to keep it nice and protected. Now, consider gold. That's an issue. Like, he does have two relics to his name with the Ranks Cathedral, but it's probably not going to be enough. And this is where I love this map, because we are talking about earlier in the cast where actually, you know, the map is designed in a way that you end up forcing yourself to, to really fight for the middle and the middle spots for the gold. And... We're almost approaching that time. That means we're going to have a bit of an action-packed next 5-10 minutes. It's going to be the Palace of Swabia. We're going to pump out villagers. and This is where it becomes really interesting for Crackety. Because with Palace of Swabia, with the ability to get cannon emplacements. And the keeps possibly getting relics inside them. With cannon emplacements as well. It could be a hard push for the Chinese. But 
you know, they've got military numbers, and I wonder whether he goes for it. I wonder whether when Anatan gets the Imperial Age, Crackety will say, okay, it was cheaper for you, but you still have to invest. Maybe now it's time to push. If he does, he's going to be up against a keep. Going to need some siege, and he's going to go for some trebuchets. I think we just had the the relic being placed in the forward keep. Makes a lot of sense. And then Pure Lager now. I wonder if Crackety starts to think, okay, well, right, I'm going to respect that. Let's go further forward and do some damage. I think the Palace of Swabia is something that might help the HRE kind of catch up with the economy. It kind of needs it. Concern for the HRE though is the lack of gold, right? Like he's teched up and does he really have control of the gold vein? I'm not so sure. He needed to get the keep in the front to protect the farms, but what does he do now do for gold? Very minimal income for gold. And this is a concern because, you know, with the Imperial Age tech up, you kind of get a couple of things out of it. You get the villages from the Palace of Swapia, but you also look to try and get, you know, tech ups. You try and get the elite upgrades for your units. Trouble is, that's very gold heavy those upgrades and you can't really afford it when you're not mining gold like this gonna get a keep in the middle and that's gonna be a great staging ground to attack from i gotta say like two trebuchets ranging that keep to be fair ultimately the range of the trebuchets mean that keep will go down relatively soon unless Adentan does something about it With three trebuchets, that's going to go, go down quick time, even with a relic inside. Anatan trying to buy some time, but what does he make in this situation without gold? He's up against palace guards and crossbowmen, and Nesta Bees. I get the feeling this army is just a little bit too tough for Anatan to be able to deal with. Like, what does he go for? Does he go for siege of his own, maybe? Siege and some at arms tank in the front line, but that's gold heavy and he doesn't have that. I'll try and get a spearman or two. Won't be able to, of course. He's wise to the ruse. Couple of lands. Is that lands? No, those are all spearmen in the end. Go for the north. Sacred site. Trying to decap it. And this is smart by Crackety, right? He recognizes gold is an issue. He's camping the north gold. He's getting gold in the south. Maybe Crackety might look to head in that position sooner rather than later. Because this is crucial. This one gold vein is massive. Unfortunately, it doesn't actually have all the relics garrison inside that one in the castle of course the castle being taken down he's gonna have to relocate that sending a couple of units around the back to try and get some raining value lancers though where are they off to diving on in they walked right into the spearman which is not ideal slowly but surely though building a bit of a push in the middle I have to force Anantan to react. Now, Anantan, interestingly enough, like he feels like he can't deal with this right now in the middle. So he might as well keep his army active, trying to get some raiding value. It may be trying to think or cause Kraken to feel like he has to head back, but Kraken is not having any of it. If anything, it's making him motivated to move on forward. A couple answers, putting away all the spearmen. About to engage. He's only engaging with half of his army here, Anantan. Some armies raiding, some armies at the back. Has a goal ring to deal with the trebuchets. If he can keep the cover and alive. Trebuchet's focusing on the outpost. Emergency repairs comes on in. Good number of crossbows for Crackety. Demolishing the man at arms on the front. Spearman mostly now just for the HRE. It's not going to be enough. The palace guard's going to rip through those. And this is the big fight that we we're waiting for. We were waiting for it to happen. And here it is. Trebuchet's still working on the outpost. Does still have two Nesta Bs. Interesting. Not engaging. That's kind of a bit unfortunate. They could have done a lot of work. But uh, they're going to head forward now maybe. Yeah, yeah, it's better late than never, I guess. But, yeah, the Culverin itching a bit further forward. Spearman in good numbers. But the HRE looking just to protect that Culverin to allow it to do what it needs to do. But it does get sniped in the end. Nesta B is now getting involved in the action. Crossbows have to back away. Spearman charging on in. And with good kiting, Crackety should be okay. Especially with the Nesta B's working off. Takes out a lot of HP on those Spearmen. But a lot of them still stay alive. He's backing away for now. Trying to buy time there, the HRE. But on the retreat, he does lose a lot of HP with the Nesta B shots. Landing right on top of them. Crossbow numbers looking great for Crackety. Crackety looking in a good spot. Here comes another wave as well. Crackety's pumping. He's staying in the castle age and why not? 
Plenty of units. Almost population captain. With this death ball of siege. With crossbows to defend. It's looking pretty dicey for Anatan to deal with. Down in the south. He does have the six right coming in. Crackety. So he'll actually spot this. I wonder if he sends a lance or two. Or just something. To stop that gold coming in. Could be massive. And with things being torched and sieged down. It's not looking ideal. Anatan needs to find a way to buy some time. And there it is. The palace guards being moved to the south. And I think that could be it actually. To be honest. Anatan. He's struggling with military numbers. And. He's losing villagers. Sure, he's got the Palace of Swabia, but he needs gold desperately. And it continues to trickle in more units. I think the addition of the Palace Guards here as reinforcements is massive. Those crossbows were looking a little bit vulnerable on their own. Not anymore. Crackety, not overextending. He's got 200 population. And it looks like maybe he just continues to do some damage and maybe itch towards Imperial Age. I think he could probably buy his way there. He's got plenty of gold. I think he might just have done so. Where does he go with the uh, the landmark though? Where's gonna what is he gonna get first of all? Where does he place it? I mean, it could be a good spot here in the south to protect the gold veins, or maybe just be aggressive with it. We'll have to see. He's gonna go with the spirit way. I thought for a second he might go for the gatehouse, not gatehouse, the great wall. Yeah, the great wall gatehouse. Instead, he's gonna go for the spirit way. Gonna be able to get the uh, dynasty technology, and also be able to uh, get a little bit of a buffering on the village, the units when they do die, the dynasty units when they do die, they will. Uh, Get a bit of extra health back on nearby units. And also the 20% attack speed, which is very nice. Sende mich zu einem Kampf. Now, the Ashuri are now population capped as well, but it's mostly like the cheaper end of units. The, cro the uh, spearmen and I think you saw a couple of man at times, but mostly spearmen. And at this stage of the game, if palace guards keep up to them, we'll be fine. Gonna go with the Imperial, Imperial Palace as well. Gonna give massive vision, but also give him access to, I believe, if it's not, if I'm not mistaken, the Fire Lancer. Can't imagine we'll see it, but we never know. Bear in mind the Palace Guards will just keep chasing on in. Does have equal movement speed with even with marching drills, so good to keep up. And there's that Imperial Palace. Spearman might just force a couple of palace guards to stay at home. But now with Imperial Age coming in, he's going to get the elite crossbowman upgrade. It's already in. Bear in mind, the Chinese can supervise the, the research, so come in, come in really quickly. Going to go for the farming at the back. Crackley actually has to be careful about this. He actually has to deal with this. He can't just allow this to happen. And sure, he's got Song Dynasty, but it's not something you can let get out of hand. Yeah, sending a couple of palace guards at the back to fight that off. Try to go for the gold on the west side. Going for the stone. I think he needs a keep here, actually, on the on the gold vein. He needs to secure something. But with this all cleared up, I suspect Crackett is going to come in with a big push. Right down the middle. Oh, Crackett, though. He needs a bit of gold of his own. There's a slither of gold there. Went for the west side, which is kind of exposed. He's got to be careful. He's got a good bank of gold and probably enough to actually see out the game. But he's got to be careful that he doesn't take some bad fights and then be a bit more dependent on gold. And that's a, a really large number of crossbowmen. It'd be difficult for the man in times to get on top of that. Still looking to try and raid with a couple of spearmen. Forcing a lot of palace guards there. A lot of palace guards as well. Bear in mind as well, the movement speed has been increased. 1.58 movement speed because of the uh, the Yuan Dynasty. For the Chinese. Two Coverins, two Mangonels. Slowly but surely pushing on forward. But, I mean... I think with the sheer number of units that Crackety has, he might look to just dive. He's going to dive on the Mangonels. Should be able to snipe with the palace guards, but it's actually kind of huge. And only one more Mangonel remains. He's ready on the right side, but Nesta B is starting to, to fire off. Manatar's pretty tanky at this stage. Of course, they are elite upgraded Manatar's. Does lose the Nesta B's in the end. But he's getting on the keep. This is such a great keep for Anatan, though. Two gold veins protected by it. That's going to secure gold for a long time. That's a that's a clutch play. He's got a great economy behind this now, Anatan. Of course, with the Palace of Swabia. All of a sudden, you know, Crackety sure has got the military advantage, but the economy looking great for Anatan. He's secured gold. He's done what he needed to do, and... 
He was able to raid Crackety, forcing the army back, just slowing down the push. And, I, you know, the, the, the situation for Alitan is not looking too bad as once it was. A little bit of raiding there with palace guards on the villages on gold, but again, with the palace of Swabia, it should be fine. He'll print them out again. Look at this, Anton doesn't even care. He's going to keep mining away and replace the villagers. Crossbows diving in here for Crackety, getting some raiding value. This is an interesting play, actually, because... It feels like it doesn't necessarily work this way. I mean, as long as uh, Alentine keeps making villagers, it'll be fine. So, ultimately, Krakeny here is trying to trade in military for villagers, but when you've got the Palace of Swabia, it doesn't feel like a good trade. It feels like often against the HRE, you want to do structural damage, and it's going to need siege and a big push, but he's achieving something here, forcing the army back, at least. I'm going to just torch down this keep. It doesn't actually have any emplacements in this, so this could actually work quite well for him if he takes it down. So unfortunately he didn't get emplacements. So cannon emplacements could have changed everything for the HRE. He doesn't have access to emergency repairs here either. So keep will go down. In fact, gold is not going to be secure for Anatan for much longer. Only has 200 in the bank as well. Crackety. Recognizing that's the key area of the map. He's denying it. Lombard working on the keep. But you know he's got some time, Crackety. Alice Guards push the villages away on gold. And maybe Anatan comes back to the south. We'll have to see. What we do know is Anatan does not have many resources in the bank left over. Crackety, he's raiding quite hard in the north. I mean, one thing to consider though, okay, sure you can make villages quite quickly and cheaply, but uh, the food income is, uh, is, is, is not supporting the HRE, what they want to achieve. Especially with raiding down the south. I can, you know what, maybe I'll take it back. With this level of raiding, maybe you can raid HRE to death, because this is a lot. It's, uh, it means that the HRE having to focus on making villages and spend the food on that rather than military. It's uh, making things rough. Going for the villagers in the north again on that gold vein. Yeah, he's really struggling on gold, you can see. But quite a few units back at home, actually. Crackety. But he's making it messy for Anatan, that's for sure. Now, I wonder if he goes for the sacred site in the north. It's protected with the palisade. It does have uh, good control in the... Well, he did have good control with the keep, but that's gone down now. Pretty, pretty even in terms of numbers. Economy and military. Palace guards diving on in. Trying to stop out the cavalry. Does actually get one of them in the end. And does take out another siege engine in the back. Running right a little bit with these palace guards. Trying to get as much value as possible on the west side. There's a bit of farming there, which is protected by an outpost with a cannon placement. So, man at arms will be okay dealing with the palace guards for sure. He's just running around <laughs> like a headless chicken. And Anatan's had enough. He said, all right, well, you want to play that game? I'm going to go right for the middle. And just as well, Crackety has some units back at home. He's actually going for the hand cannoneers, which I love, by the way. If, if Crackety can get some more time... If you can mass hand cannoneers, that's going to be difficult to deal with. The hand cannoneer ranges are massive. You've got the front line units. And you start to take the engagement suboptimally here, Crackety, but with the influx of palace guards and with the defender's advantage, this could actually work quite well out for him. He's taking the fight. I mean, Anatan is not winning that at all. The hand cannoneer is a great play. It just ripped through everything. Did have a couple of crossbows as well, and Anatan, in the blink of an eye, lost a critical army, by the way. Heavily gold costing army and there's not that much more gold that he can take off the map he's taking a bit here maybe crackety focuses on that it's got so many miniature units now it's in the south as well which actually crackety will spot and know about if he looks in the minimap better just going for this gold once again he's trying to get as much gold as he possibly can Oh, he's sending palace guards in the south, looking to raid the gold once again. Manantar's being sent. A couple of hand cannons will deal with that eventually. Down the middle, though, that's kind of where it's looking a bit scary, because Anatar's moving right on in with his man at arms. But palace guards as well, moving in for Crackety. They're going right on top of the farming economy. This could be massive. 
Both players going right for the juggler vein. But the big concern for Alentand, he's not going to be able to reproduce the army once he loses it, right? So this is the big issue. Like Palace Guard's getting a lot of value here, and Defender's Advantage is not going to count for as much because he can't really produce heavily armoured units. Doesn't have the gold. The difference is that Crackety can. Like, he will lose units at the back, but he's going to have Palace Guards. He's going to have crossbows popping out. Instead, the HRE, a belly can have anything popping out. Doesn't have any food, doesn't have any wood banked up. Well, at least not enough as he needs, and... This is not great. Anatand, like, he, he can't... He has a Palace of Swap here, but he can't use the food on it. But Palace Guard's going to go for the Siege Engines. That's massive. He's going to lose premium units because of it. Now, he does have a couple of hand cannoneers, which means he could keep them alive. This is one Mangonel out of it all, and there's a mayhem. I mean, I think it's all coming down to who can be a bit more resilient, who can survive. And it feels like Crackety will survive, because look at those Palace Guards at the back. Whereas the HRE, they can't make anything. Food economy completely idled, and more importantly... Doesn't really have the gold. Now, Village is down to 59. He's just lost so many here, Anatand. But if he can stabilize, he does have the Palace of Swabi, but it is a big if. Ultimately, Crackety, with so many units now, if he does push forward, it could be dangerous. Although, it looks like Anatand coming in with the second wave. He needs to get the villagers out onto Fubit again, desperately. A pretty back and forth game at times actually this is a nice push that both players had kind of even but it feels like of course with Crackety's gold income and how safe it is in the bank it's uh, looking good interesting this relic actually never got picked up by either player bit of an oversight Manatons on the villagers, that's a bit of a problem. This is kind of the first time where Crackety has been pushed off the neutral golds. So that, could that be a signal for the pendulum swinging? I, I just think I just think the Chinese and the uh, the hand cannoneers is such a strong late game unit. Because of the range, like the first strike that you get with them, not literally first strike, but the first hit you get them because of the extra range is, is, is massive. It can turn a fight in a big way. Something that could do decently well against them is possibly Maganel as long as they can get close enough. Mass outpost coming up in the south. Anatan wants the gold. There's not as much gold left in it though. Just a, thou a thousand odd. Now Crackley does actually have this gold behind the palisades he could take advantage of. He's taking the sacred site in the north now. Going to get a bit more gold trickling in from that as well. Plenty of wooden gold. Maybe Crackley goes for a bit more siege. We missed the nest of bees for a while. It's been a while since we've seen a nest of bees. Raiding around the back once again. Uh, and the Yuan Dynasty actually really helps in the raiding aspect of things. The movement speed is just, you know, a bit fast. I think these Palace Guard, these uh, Manitons are keeping up because of the charge. Although, actually, marching drills, yeah, it is because of the charge, yeah. The difference is quite significant. He's raiding a little bit, but cannon placement will take care of them in the end. He's pushing on in now, down the middle. Hand cannoneers, Palace Guards, a couple of crossbows sprinkled in with two bombards. And this is where it really matters. Like, with these pushes, Crackety has to do infrastructural damage. He has done quite a bit with taking the keep and the production buildings on the front, but now he needs to do some more. Mangonels deploy right on top of the palace guards. They go right head against each other. Good number of mana tiles with the HRE. Decent okay-ish numbers for hand cannoners. Will it be enough? And I'm not so sure. Either way, the two bombards are going to focus on the mangonels, it seems. Maybe not, actually. What are they focusing on? It looks like the army. It does, it does take out one mangonel in the end, but... I mean, it's kind of hard to tell. Like, HRE does have a lot of man and times. Defenders advantage are working out well as well. Does lose one bomb out of Kraken. He has to retreat. He doesn't have enough. It just, it's just heavy maces. It's looking so good for these man these at arms. Elite man at arms at that. Kraken, he has to retreat. That fight worked out really well for the HRE. He's going to be able to stabilize once again now. This is where it becomes really scary. The HRE man at arms. Certainly one of the strongest in the game, and they're putting the palace guards to the test. Rusted, 
But certainly the match is kind of devolving into who can secure these gold veins. There's not many left. Sending some palace guards down the south. It does have a relic inside the outpost. Yeah, you can see definitely Anatan trying to keep this area secure. Doesn't actually have anything in the way of emplacements though. We have to rely on villagers garrisoning inside. Palace cars going down the gold in the south, and there's going to be a bit of good raiding here. I mean, the lack of emplacement's kind of hurting Anatan a bit. But it's just, just backing away. They're not even garrisoning inside. It means actually the outpost didn't really achieve all that much. In fact, this is, yeah, they didn't achieve anything. I mean, it's going to lose a relic because of it as well. Mansab's going around the back, trying to raid as much as he can the HRE, but again, not achieving too much. It's a bit of a deadlock situation, actually, I've got to say. Man of Times are coming to save the day, and Cannoneers at the back, ready to jump on top of the Man of Times heading in from the HRE. Palace Guards, they, they never have to engage, though. The Yuan Dynasty is such a really, really, really nice dynasty for these units. They can always uh, dictate the fights. If they win to fight, they will. If they don't want to fight, they won't. I mean, this is difficult to predict who's going to win this, actually. For a long time, I thought Crackety had a, a really good position, but the HRE, they're very difficult to kill off. Speaking of which, he's going to try and dive this. Oh, wait, he's uh, going to snipe out a Manganel maybe for free. That could be massive. He's only got one Manganel after all. Does get a massive shot off, but mostly on the Palace Guards, which are okay at dealing with Tank and against that. But that's a lot of hand cannoneers now for the Chinese. I think this fight might be a lot different. The first fight was a bigger one, and it was much better for the HRE. But this time, look at the hand cannon numbers. This hand cannon is going to do amazing work on the Man of Arms. Man of Arms coming in as reinforcements, but I don't think he has enough. And this time, with the Bombard behind it, maybe he can do some structural damage. We have to see... Has lost a lot of the meat shield, but I mean, take a look at the hand cannon numbers. The man at arms can't get close yet, but he, he's recognizing that Anatan, and he is backing away. Palace guards coming in reinforcements, and they join the fight really quickly with their movement speed. This is devastating. I think this is a push that maybe Anatan can't hold, even with the outposts, even with emergency repairs. This is definitely an emergency for the HRE. Pushing on in, palace guards. Need to go into the front line, actually. Make sure those uh, hand cannoneers are safe. Uh, this is a problem for Anatan. He, he's going for hand cannoneers, but ultimately he can't he can't match the hand cannoneers that are coming from the Chinese. The range of attack is just so much better. And this is this is devastating now, because if he keeps the economy idled, Anatan is not going to be able to produce units. He's really struggling on food, and there it is. He recognizes he is down on it. Anatan taps out on cliffside. The Chinese coming in with some great late-game units. The Yuan Dynasty... And the hand cannoneers taking the game. Hope you guys enjoyed this casting game on YouTube. If you did, make sure you give the video a thumbs up. Take care and see you next time.